Yeah, right now I see you're doing the video projection art. That's yes, really new. That's, that's my, really cool. That's my most recent exploration because, uh, you know, during quarantine, uh, especially 2020, many people get uh, locked down at home and uh, uh, I'm one of them get locked down and uh, get uh, COVID and uh, during that time I was a little bit stressful and uh, depressed. I start to think about uh, what I can do with my art. Uh, yeah. Can I use my art to heal people, to heal myself? So uh, I start to explore the relationship between art and meditation. I do a lot of meditation when I feel upset and under sad. So uh, when, I, when I start to do the meditation, there are always some uh, sound, sound healing like a meditation ball. They have that ball with specific sequence, which is really beautiful uh, sound frequency. So I decided to work with that frequency and uh, uh, connect that with my digital drawing. It starts to gradually come together, become one meditation related piece. It really enhances the experience of the meditation when you are getting lost in the visual and you're listening to the frequencies. Sometimes I use my home projector, project the work in a larger scale and uh, do the meditation with my work. I just watch it and uh, when I watch it rotate, I just forget everything. I feel like, oh, that moment is so peaceful. In certain points, when you close your uh, eyes and uh, you do see some visual as well. Uh, that's my experience. Oh, yeah. So in certain stages, I start to see those geometry colors and uh, those beautiful patterns. Uh, although I close my eyes, but I still can see it. So I decide to write, it, uh, draw it down, and I use those digital drawing combined with that uh, singing ball frequency to do the animation of the work. Uh, eventually, I got the idea: the meditation sound should uh, relate to the movement because I do when, every time when I saw it I always hear the sound so that's why I uh, decided to put the two different elements together when did you start meditating uh, during 2020 when I got COVID <laughs> oh yeah do you sacred geometry in any of your work in like um, architecture I guess the actual math upon architecture yes yes because I think geometry is a really important object in architecture. We, we saw many beautiful geometry when we went to church, those important uh, landmark. Uh, geometry also always plays an important role there. And uh, I think geometry also represents the spiritual part of the world. Uh, that's why I, uh, my, I, I deal with this uh, new work with hexagon. Because I think the hexagon could perfectly divide the geometry in a proper way and create that beautiful uh, illusion, illusionary feeling. Yeah, I think uh, interactive art is quite trendy and uh, maybe exactly. become more and more important in the future because we live in an internet world today and uh, yeah. people want to get related, get, res get connected by the artwork. Uh, when they work in uh, a gallery or museum, they saw the work interact with their movement or the the data they provided. They would feel like they get uh, uh, they become part of the work, and the work start to communicate with the audience. That's what I feel. So I decide to go to the interactive direction because the traditional fine arts they are good, but. Uh, they kind of stop the communication. People can only watch it, but they cannot give the input to the work and uh, have the uh, communication in between. So where do you see like, the future of your work going? Are you going to continue going down with uh, the visual projections and the augmented and virtual reality art? I'm still uh, trying to put them together, but it's still pretty hard and challenging. Because uh, in this field, it's still pretty new. Not many people work on uh, this part, like uh, connect the virtual reality to the visual arts and uh, make a transfer. Maybe because visual art is two dimensional and uh, virtual reality is like three dimensional, how to transfer or connect the two dimension to three dimension is still, uh, that would be my direction of exploration in the future. Yeah, and unlike the fire arts, it's like the unique piece.
once you get the unique piece, you get the, the only right of the work. But for yeah. digital art, the, the most hard part is how to define the uh, ownership of the digital file. There are so many copy version. That's also my worry about the digital art because uh, because I also did some uh, design, like a product design before, and my work immediately be copied by some big companies. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's happening all the time out there. It's just it's just too easy to take digital art. Yeah. I don't know, I don't I, know how they stop them. That's the reason why I start to think about uh, public relations is important. You need to mm-hmm. be realized by people. So they would uh, know your work, your style. If you don't launch it or if you don't show in front of people, they would uh, never know. And uh, those company, big company, always get the authority and uh, get the uh, news price to show their uh, work. But uh, might be copied. I have I have nothing to prove. I'm the one to initiate the work. So nowadays, I'm more more and more care about the public yeah. relations. The work of the past was quite yeah. uh, represent my uh, personal emotion. When I do this work, I just uh, want to describe my emotion in that moment. Some is angry, some is sad, <laughs> some is yeah. uh, happy, some is um, peaceful. So uh, I trying to capture that moment, that feeling. So that's why I uh, start to make the music because I think music is a really abstract object. It's not like uh, visual art, you can directly see it. Uh, when you hear those abstract sound, you can um, you can start to have some Im- imagination in your mind. And uh, I feel like I feel like music is more easy to talk with people's hearts. Uh, for the incoming uh, exhibition, I would want to include my own live performance because the live performance would also contribute to part of the work. When I play the Gu Zheng, uh, Gu Zheng is a, uh, is a traditional instrument in China. It has 2,000 years year. history. Yeah, and uh, uh, with that instrument, I, I've been playing Gu Zheng for 25 years. So wow. before, before that, I never saw, uh, I, I think it's uh, two different things. I, when I do music, I just do do music. When I do the work, the artwork, I just do the artwork. I, it was until this year, I just uh, started to think, what if I combine them together? Since that meditation right. experience, I started to think, uh, I, I know the both sides, but why shouldn't I just uh, trying to combine them and uh, become one piece? So uh, this year, what I'm exploring is music interacted with uh, visual work. Yeah, this uh, is the first exciting. time. I, I didn't launch it because I don't want to leak it before it really start. Right. <laughs> yeah, I want to protect my own work. Well, luckily, there's not work... many people that can play the Gu Zhang and make art. So like, you are pretty unique. There's not a lot of people that can copy that. Yeah, I hope so because I already uh, spent a lot of time on this. And uh, I'm I'm a professional Guzheng player, so I, yeah, I feel heard. like it's this... Beautiful. Thank you so much. So I think this is unique for me and uh, uh, also unique for my audience as well. I used to try to work with a uh, Chinese gallery. And uh, uh, once I, I... I worked for once and uh, after that, they find someone to copy my work. <laughs> That's so really? ridiculous. Yeah, and this wow. time, because I'm not in China, so uh, it's hard to keep working on. They just find someone uh, can do some similar work like me to sign the contract. And I, I do think a lot about what I can do to make my own piece unique. Because yeah. people who yeah. don't see my face, don't see uh, the process I made this. They only see the result, and anyone could copy the result. It's better to combine your work, your live performance, or your uh, yeah, face yeah. or your identity with the uh, work. I, I think for my future target or goal is like have some uh, larger space to do this kind of interactive show. And uh, if I got the access to those 3D printer or laser color, I could start to make like a larger sculptural installation. Ooh. 
so it could uh, interact with the projection because the projection is light as well. Right. So you could uh, project uh, through the sculpture to create uh, some beautiful shadows, and uh, uh, it responds to my music as well. That's that's my imagination about the advanced version. If I have the access to the physical workshop. <laughs> right, and then I know a lot of your music was paired up with the Tibetan bowls, and that'd be unique. Like, you think it's possible you could do a blend experience with the Tibetan bowls in the projections at the same time as like a group meditation event? Yeah, yeah that'd it's be really possible. Neat. It's possible. It's possible. There's a lot of meditation events already in yes. Austin, especially, and I've never seen anyone do like a visual art experience plus meditation. Like it's always, you know, as you were saying earlier, the people with the closed eyes and kind of like a really quiet room. This is different. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is a uh, uh, possible because it's also sound. Uh, as long as it's a sound, it's it has frequency. Uh, it could yeah. uh, corresponding to the work. Yeah. That is really cool. I I feel like uh, maybe uh, my next step is uh, first just uh, uh, launch a sample for my work, make more people uh, read those prize, or maybe have some place to know my work. Yeah, how many and, social uh, medias are you on? What? How many, uh, what social medias do you use? Uh, I use Instagram, but I barely promote okay. my Instagram. I, okay. I, I'm so bad at the social media. And I, I used to have TikTok, but I, uh, I only post a few times. I have Douyin as well, Chinese TikTok. I just started recently. And uh, I, I was really surprised. The reaction of a Chinese audience is quite different from here. Really? What, are they, what is their reaction? Uh, I, I I just uh, do a normal introduction, say I'm an artist and uh, I do what kind of art and I hope I can share more art in the future and some people are angry out about me. Like, angry. how could you, yeah, they were like, how could you call yourself artist? <laughs> oh my god, come on. It is yeah, it's so, it's so funny and uh, some people is like, uh, how, how could you say you can create art? Because I, I feel maybe it's a cultural difference. In China, people prefer be more humble. They they prefer someone call you artist, but you cannot call yourself your artist. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, out here so, it's all about titling yourself whatever you want to be. <laughs> yeah, I feel here is more more freedom, more easier. You yeah. don't need to care about how people think about you. So, I I feel like uh, here is definitely a good start point. And once you have something here, it's easier to duplicate to other places. Because I do know yeah. there are many Chinese gallery and museums, they lick off the content. The only the only problem I I worry is just a copy. They they, they are so good at the copy. So uh I yeah, there's I know probably no are... stopping that. Sadly there's probably no stopping that, but as long as your name's strong enough, it won't even matter. You know, because yeah. people won't even want to go to that knockoff show you know they want to go to the Zin Yi show because they're Zin Yi yeah so I, I feel like you have a really I'm good a... name too you have a really good sounding name so it's actually <laughs> it's, gonna really, it's gonna be easy to make that name rememberable because it's it sticks in your mind very easily so I I do think so I I totally agree so right now my priority is trying to build up my name first and uh, have show here have show in America get a more enough price here so uh, once I get those things those recognition I have more confidence to play in China or do other activity outside of the US the, yeah, I saw you had a you have quite a bit of exhibition and duration history already too I saw on your website so that, that definitely looks really good and that's um, definitely something I could really use when you're going to newspapers or anything like that to get publications thank you um do, do you know how to do the uh social uh the, the price um price what like a uh, artist exposure do do you know how oh, to do this yeah to get press releases and publications yeah yeah that's one thing i i've learned a lot about this past year and i've been pretty good at I, a lot of them they just want good articles and good content already pre-made and 
for them. So you just gotta get a good article written by yourself. You gotta get some good, you know, professional portraits done, and mm-hmm. just make yourself look really important. And then if you call up all these people, make the phone calls and make the right words, you can get on these magazines and featured articles in different uh, newspapers, local, not local, blogs. It's kind of like a ladder. You just gotta build your way up of the, the totem pole, different levels of publication. It's it's really hard to ha- hard to do it uh, alone as an artist because yeah. I every time when I feel think of this I'm quite frustrated. I have no one, no professional uh, agent to talk with and uh, yeah. don't know how to do it. Although I know I have a really good uh, uh, technique or have a good ability to create a high quality work, but still uh, this part is quite hard. <laughs> Yeah, it's impossible to do anything alone, especially being an artist, because you have to like make something so unique and amazing, and then also be able to translate that for everyone else can see it the same way. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there are some people think, oh, you graduate from RISD, you're supposed to uh, have everything. So they, they <laughs> feel like, oh, you should do it yourself. <laughs> and I got that burden as well. I feel like. Uh, now it's no means I can do everything. Everyone has their professional part. It definitely helps in selling who you are, though. Being able to say that you graduated from there and with the architecture background, it definitely it's a really nice addition to your story and your whole history of selling your name, who you are. Yeah, I I do know it's a, a good part. Uh, for my school, but uh, I, I just hope people don't have too high expectation because I graduated from there. I need to be like that way, this way. But I'm myself first. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think they're gonna be pretty blown away. I mean, it looks. I mean, it looks amazing. This stuff really does look amazing. Like it's just missing 10 million viewers. I, I do have, uh, when I was in China, I do have some classmates uh, in Chinese art school. They have the show uh, this year there in in uh, in Venice. I think yeah. that's possible for me because I feel like my my work is better than their, their work. But they get a better resource, so they get the work exhibited over there and sell to those people. Uh, uh, I, I feel like if I got the chance to exhibit there, I can also do better than them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really all just a lot of those people that got there because they know the right people. That's, you know? Networking? Yeah, that's all it is. And then our, the whole entire art industry is just network. It's all about knowing the curators in different places. Like, everyone that got in that museum was because they're friends with someone at that museum. Mm. For the most part. But, but do you think artists should be always networking for with those people or just keep working? Yeah, I mean, I feel like networking is such an important part because those people are the people that have the key to the audiences, you know, they hold the viewers, so you, you kind of have to talk to them. I mean, you can definitely build your own audience, but like, it's really hard to build your own audience by yourself. Like, I think the best way to build an audience is by connecting with other people's audiences and then have and then get more and more that just builds on and I, it's kind of like a, a web or a spider web in a ways. That's right. It's better to collaborate yeah. with some platform. They already have audience as well. And you exactly. contribute yeah. the content to that. Yeah. And your unique influence is going to be your unique influences whether you collaborate or not. You know, it's just like as long as you remain true to yourself. It's opening up other audiences is just amazing. 